You are listening to King Jesus Radio, the official podcast of New Living Way Church. Tune in to listen to Sunday and Wednesday services. Thank you. Without further ado, we do have a special guest, and we have Bishop Kendall Davis that has come to be a blessing and a servant of the Lord to bring the word today. So we're going to welcome him up today. Amen, church. Amen. Come on, give God some praise in this place. The Lord is good, and his mercy endures forever. I thank God for being here with you guys today. I'm excited. New living way. Hey, hey, hey. I'm excited to be here. Um. You guys, today has been a while since I've been here, man. I came um, to the um, uh, other day and I'm like, man, I always get donuts when I come back there over there and I didn't have no donuts. I, I felt a little strange without the donuts and everything. And I said, and Scotty's is closed down, so we can't even go to Scotty's after after the, um, the meal. But um, amen, after the service. So amen, you guys know that was one of Pastor Abel's spots that he used to take for breakfast. So that was, you know, love the guy and everything. But I love you guys, too. I see some new faces since I ba- last been here. I see some old faces since I last been here. So, but it is really, really good. If you join me, um, get your Bibles and join me in Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. Um, Galatians. I, I love the book of Galatians because my life verse is contained in Galatians. Um, for you, those who don't know uh, what life verses are. That's that scripture that you, they would tell us, get a scripture that's going to define your life in Christ. It's going to define your ministry. It's going to define your, your thought. And so we would, we would grab a life verse, which makes up everything I, I am and everything I considered myself to be in Christ is contained in that life verse. So my life verse is Galatians 5, 6, which says, in Christ Jesus, it doesn't matter if you're circumcised or you're uncircumcised. The only thing that matters to Christ is that you have faith and what? You show your faith through your love. And so everything I did, my life verse is that. My wife's life verse is that spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor, to heal the, um, to heal the um, brokenhearted, to um, restore the sight of the blind and set the captives free. That's her life verse, you know. And I don't know if you guys have been there where you, they told you, get a life verse. This scripture tells you it's something always you can go back to that reminds you of who you are. And I, 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 so that's why I like Galatians because my life verse is found. If I, if, if I have any questions in myself or any conflicts in myself, I return back to that verse that says the only thing matters to Christ is that I have faith and I show my faith through love. Amen. And so that, that, that's powerful to me when I struggle. I have a brother in church. His is a Philippians. You know, I can do all things through Christ. Who strengthens me? There's so many good verses that you can just grab something for your life. Something that hits you. Something that means something to you. I'll tell you, if you get nothing else from here today, but get yourself a life verse to strengthen you in the hard times, then I've done my job. Amen. So search the scriptures because in them, the Bible says there is life. Amen. And they tell you about Jesus Christ. But some people don't go to the scriptures and find him. They find all kinds of other things. They find worries, concerns. They find fears. They they find rules and instructions. But we're supposed to get in here to find Christ. Amen. Amen. Is is someone here ready to find Christ? Find him wherever you're at. So Galatians chapter 5, you should have it by now because I just talked a whole bunch. Amen. If you don't have it by now, you need to say, just hold down, preacher. It says this in verse 14, for the law is fulfilled in one word, even this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, take heed, yes, you be consumed one another. This I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Now I'm going to jump down to verse um, 22. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, 
long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faithfulness, meekness, temperance, which is in the word for self-control against these. There is no law and they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with his afflictions and lusts. For if we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Let us also um, be desirous of, of um, de desirous of vainglory, provoking one another, envying one another. Let us not be desirous of the empty things. Father, we just thank you today. We just ask you, Lord, that you would speak to our hearts and our minds, Lord, that you would keep us in your perfect will and in your way. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Someone said it earlier um, when it, they were talking about the great commandment that we shall love the Lord God with all of our heart, our mind, and all of our soul. And understanding this, that the, when God breathed into man, man became a living creature. God takes the dust to the ground. He forms the body of man. And then he breathed into man's nostrils, what? the breath of life or the spirit of life. And when the spirit of life reached that created body, man, the Bible says in Genesis became a living, the flesh, a living soul, a, a soul being, which means that, that he gave you something of himself in order to make you unique in who you are. He gave you something that makes you, you, we all have a nefesh, a soul in us, but my soul is not the same as your soul, and your soul is not the same as her soul, and her soul is not the same as his soul, but we're different. God is the spirit of God can breathe on every last one of us and get a different result from what he breathes upon us. God is good, and, we, and, and, and he said our goal is to love him with all that of our mind, all of our heart, all of our soul, which would be our will. And, and Matthew version says all of our strength. Mark doesn't, um, and, and Mark says all of our mind, heart, and strength. Mac, and Mark's version said with all of our strength, excuse me. And so when I read the book of Galatians, I see the tension in the book because Paul was combating with some Judaizers who were trying to return them back to the law. So in chapter one, he goes on to say, you know what? If, if, if I still sought to please people, I would no longer be a servant of God. In chapter two, he goes on talking about how he submitted the gospel to the leaders that were before him, but what they were didn't really matter because what he received, he received from God, but they didn't add on anything to him. Then in chapter three, he goes on to tell them about how, you know, some of you guys are bewitched because you began in the spirit and now you're returning back to the um, beggary things. Now you're turning back to works of the law. So he's dealing with the tension inside of the body of Christ. And inside the church of Galatia and how they had some people that had, they were different. They, 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 they believed in Jesus, but they, you know, still held on to some things that Jesus was trying to free them from. You know, if you guys remember what's the name of the church, what's the original name of the church from Acts chapter um, 22 and chapter 24, Acts chapter 22, verse two. When Paul given his his dissertation to the Jews, he said, and I used to persecute those who were from what the way. Right. And chapter 24, verse 14, and he's laying out before Felix and he says to Felix, he says, I do serve God according to the, the way which they call a sect. In verse 22 of that same chapter of 24, Felix said, I, I, him having more a, a just understanding of the way. So the original name of the church was what? The way. Because in John chapter 14, Jesus says what? The way, the truth, and the life. Why am I saying this? So in Galatians, he's presenting them the way, the way they're to do things. He's taking the tension of the old way and showing them a new living way. My God. <sighs> he takes the tension of the old way and all the things that came before. And he says this, we have a new way 
and this way is alive, and this is the way we do things, and this is the way of the Spirit, even though it builds upon the law, it's not the way, because the law condemns, but the way of the Spirit brings life. So he shows them a new living way. So his, I liked it because when I begin thinking about coming here, I say Galatians is all about showing people a new and living way. Amen. Uh, when, 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 when someone says who you are, you are what? New living way. I said, who are you? Say it like you mean it. Who are you? We are, you're a new living way. And Christ came to show you a new and living way. A way that was not just based upon the, the structure of the rules. The rules were, were safety features. Galatians tells us in chapter 2, and it tells us that the law was added um, uh, um, 400 years later in order to protect the promise. So this. For those who've been reading your Bibles, you should already know that the Bible says that the that law was added because transgression was increasing. Let me let me um, turn back to you because some of you look like you may not have heard about um, the law being added and how the law was confirmed and, and the purpose of the law and everything like this. Galatians, in matter of fact, chapter three, verse seventeen. And I say this also, the covenant that was confirmed before God in Christ, the law, which was 430 years after, cannot disannul that which is of the promise uh, of making it in effect. For if the inheritance had um, come by the law, then it's no more by promise. But God gave it to Abraham by promise. So what he gives you, he gives you by promise. Wherefore, then what is the purpose of the law? It was added because transgression into the seed singular would come whom the promise was made and it was ordained through angels in the hands of a mediator who is Moses. And but now there's one meter um, and um, there's only one meter, but in God is one. So it says this, the law was given because God gave a promise to Abraham to bless the people of, uh, of Israel. But the people of Israel would act up. And so the law was given to protect the promise. The law wasn't, wasn't, you know, there are people acting up and God's like, I gave a promise to Abraham and his descendants based upon a promise I gave him that cannot be annulled even by the law. That's what it says in the text. The law, life couldn't come through the law. Nothing could, everything comes through the promise. The law was added. Because of the transgressions of the people, because to keep them in a framework so they don't get out of order so that God will fulfill the promise. But when but when the promise seed comes, we the Bible tells us we are no longer under the law, but we are under what? We are grace. We have a what? A new living way. All right. We have a new living way. I have a new way to live that's not based upon the law that was added. Because of transgressions. I'll just go read the rest of it. So is the law then uh, against the promise? God forbid. Verse 21. If the law had been a good, who's been that could give life and verily righteousness, it would have been by the law. But the scripture has concluded all under sin that the promise by faith in Jesus Christ might be given to them who believe. So the law had its place. The law is, is like this. You make rules in your house and it has its place. But the purpose of you giving rules is not the, just to the, the, the tell someone over and over again so they can get it down in their spirit. When my son, I would say, take out the trash, son, and I would remind him to take out the trash. Every time I remind him to take out the trash, it was with the intention that I would no longer have to remind him that it will become automatic in his spirit. Every time I say, take out the trash, I don't want to say, take out the trash every single week for the rest of my life. I want to say it and I want to repeat it and I want to repeat it again and repeat it again until he gets it that it is his duty and responsibility while he's in the house to automatically take out the trash so he doesn't have to be asked. So the law was at it because if God, because the father wanted us to get something in us to make it automatic. It was all added so it can be automatically in our heart. 
Look at this. He wants to give us the law so we can understand the spiritual fruit. To understand, keep us in line, keep us in order, but I need you to get something in your heart. But the things you get into your heart, you don't get it from the law, you get it from the spirit. The what God wants to give you in your heart cannot come from the law because with the law is punishment. With the law is no love in the law. law. The law is just as it is. There ain't no love in the law. But when it's grace comes and the spirit comes, there's love. There's generosity. There's, there's grace. There's peace. There's healing. There's forgiveness. The law does not forgive. Now, uh, the law had a built-in um, system to fix your mess up, and that was a sacrificial system. You mess up the law, you got to make the sacrifice. You got to give your sheep. You got to give your, and you know a lot of us don't like giving our stuff away, right? You, what it would be like if they said, you, you break the law, you got to give up your car. You break the law, you got to give up the keys to your house. You break the law, that's your wardrobe. You break, oh no, I ain't breaking no laws. Somebody said, oh, you can do that. No, mm -mm, they're taking my car if I do that. I done paid too much. The sheep, the goats and everything, it, they cost too much. I got a, I, I birthed that thing. I, 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 I delivered the, the birth of that thing, pulled it out of his mother's womb and everything, and nursed it and fed it and everything, and it's providing milk for my kids and everything, cheese, I turned it to get the cheese, and it's providing, it. you know, they say it, it, it's best in the poor countries, instead of giving them food, we need to give them goats, right? Because a goat will eat dirt, goat will eat off anything, but it will, it will produce milk. So if you give a four pan family a goat, they got milk to, to sell. They got cheese. They, they can eat, have milk for their little babies. They can have cheese so they can sell in the market in exchange for, for bread and other stuff. So a goat is better than any food you give them. Give them a goat. They, they, don't, they don't need the food. They're like, man, this goat going to make food for us. All my babies got milk. I ain't got to worry about the little babies. We got some cheese and everything, and you got some bread. I, I'll give you some cheese. You give me some bread, and we're going to work this out. I give you some cheese. You're going to give me some rice. I give you some cheese. You're going to give me some beans. You're going to exchange something for what you got. So the goat is, a, a is, 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 man, man, the greatest of all time. The goat is like, man, provide for me. A new and living way so I don't have to keep on coming back to this well over and over again. Amen. So when, when, when he was telling us about this new and living way, the new and living ways of the spirit. And, and when you understand it, the spiritual fruit comes from yielding to the Holy Spirit. You know, um, you know, it's, 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 it's the choice to yield to the sovereignty of God. I, I see those cars and I remember my wife at one time she was thinking about a Tesla, but you can't do here in the U.S. what you can do with Tesla in some other countries. Because in the U.S. it's not legal to let the Tesla do the total driving for you. And they're testing it out in, in other countries. But you know, the Teslas are designed where they can drive for you if you need to. You drunk in the back seat, you can program your address in and some of the Teslas that are so driving will drive to your house They'll park for you and everything. I had a coworker, she has a Prius, and the Prius parks for you. You know, she just drives up everything and it backs up and park for you for her. And I see her, she's letting it and she pushes the button and park. And she said, I gotta always keep resisting my urge for grabbing the steering wheel. Even though it's legal for the car to self-park. And even though it will park parallel park for her, she always has the urge to grab the steering wheel. The Holy Spirit will guide you. He will lead you. He will take you to where you need to go. But you got to ha resist the urge to putting your hands back on that steering wheel. We have an urge. I just want to grab that steering wheel because I just feel unsafe. Even though I know it is programmed, even though I, I know it's been tested, even though I know all this thing, it got sensors, even though I know it, 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 if, if something's wrong with it, it'll cut itself off and it's going to force me to do it. But I just want to grab that steering wheel and do it myself. Even though we, I got features and I got functions and I got things that are available to me, but I don't want to use it because I got to lose control. 
I got to take my hand off of it. And that's what it's like with the Holy Spirit. You have to take your hand off of it and let the spirit do the driving. So the spirit is a new living way. They didn't have the spirit in, in, uh, permanently on them in the Old Testament. Spirit came on someone to, to fight a battle. The spirit came on to someone to prophesy and the spirit would leave. So that wasn't a way because if, if something leaves me, I can't use that as my way to live. But now we have a permanent indwelling of the spirit and he wants to bear fruit inside of our lives. Now, look at this. The fruit of the spirit goes into three groups. There are fruit that affects your attitude, fruit that affects your relationships and fruit that affects your service. Here it goes. It says this. Um, but the fruit of the spirit is love. This is the word agape. Agape is a type of love that is an act of your will. Is a the decision to love somebody, which means this agape is not an emotional type of love. It can become emotional. Once you get attached, but, when he, but it basically means I'm going to do the best for you, thing for you, even if you don't like it. Agape is four type of loves, you know, Greek, right? We have the eros, which means the erotic, lustful love. We have the phileo, which means I like you, you my friend. And you get, we have the storge love, which is that natural affection that father has for their child or child has for the father. And then that unselfish agape love, that altruism, that decision to love. When you go around and people say, you know, you tell the people that you're Christian, so you love everyone. People say, well, how can you really love people you don't know? Them? Because I have made a decision to seek what's best for your life. I have decided to love you, even if I don't know you. Now, look at this. People have a hard time accepting that people they don't know love them, but they will accept that there's millions of people that hate them that never met them. Prejudice, discrimination, sexism. They believe there are tons of people out there that hate them just for who they are. But they struggle to accept that you're going to love them regardless of who they are. If someone can hate you just for being Hispanic, if they can hate you for being a woman, if they can hate you for being black, if they can hate you for being white, if they can hate you for being native, if they can hate you for no good reason, that I can love you for no reason at all. That is the fruit of my attitude. It, it is a decision and that affects my will. Remember, all right, we will love God with all our hearts, our mind, and our will. My agape is a decision of the will. It's an altruistic. So the first one is agape. It's an act of the will. And it deals with our, our sovereignty and our selfishness and our sacrifice. Where we going to let God take control. The second fruit of the spirit is joy. Look at this. Joy, the word joy here means I'm glad because I received grace. And look, joy is, is different than happiness, right? Because to make somebody happy depends on the external situations. I'm, I, I give my wife my wife right there. I give her a gift. She gets happy based on the circumstance. But joy isn't based upon your circumstance. Joy is internal and joy is not based upon what people do for you. It's based upon your sense of satisfaction in yourself. Joy is related to your peace. I can be in the midst of a storm and joyful because joy is internal inside of me and is not based upon what's going on in my life. Happiness is based upon what's going on. Now, look at this. Both joy and happiness lead to a, a state of uh, a feeling of, of satisfaction and well-being. But happiness never lasts unless there's joy on the inside. Because you got to keep on feeding happiness. You got to keep on doing things that make me happy. I get a new outfit. You ever get that new outfit? You look at yourself. I'm happy. I done bought it for myself. And I'm looking at myself in the mirror. I'm like, ooh, dang, man. You, I ain't the only one that did that, right? All right. My wife would have those, the outfit in the back of the closet for two months. And then, and then and she'll put it on and she'll be like this. And I was like, is that new? Oh no, this old thing. And I said, baby, you still got the tag on it. 
Oh, I bought this like a couple of months ago. And yeah, you bought it, pushing it back in the closet. So when I ask you, you can't tell, I can't, you can't say that it's new. I didn't had this for months. It's just been sitting in the back of the closet. But she put it on. She's like, hmm, this, man, I look good. This color looks good on me. This, man. I'm not the only one. Man, you go get things that make you happy. But man, put that same outfit on six months later. It ain't got no effect. It's all right. It's all right. It don't, it don't do the same thing. Because the happiness is built on something new, something fresh happening. But the joy is built on what's on the inside. I can have joy in the midst of things going wrong. It is, it is, it is my attitude. See, joy is the attitude of my heart. I have the attitude of my heart that's based upon the appreciating whatever God does for me, appreciating that favor is on my life, appreciating that I have the presence of God. I have his joy down in my heart. I got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Hey, down in my heart. I got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart today. Amen. Y'all know the song. <laughs> The third thing that affects your attitude is peace. Mm. Peace happens in your mind. It's, it's, my mind is settled in God. The Bible says that he shall keep in perfect peace who he whose mind is stayed on him. Once I, I, I get out there and those waves are, 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 are going around and going down and going around. In the mind, I see the, the waves and I see the wind blowing and I take my eyes off of Jesus. My mind is no longer stayed on him. And now I'm panicking because when my mind is no longer stayed on him, I don't have no peace. It is no longer stability. So look at this. Agape is what? The attitude of our will. Joy is the attitude of our heart. And peace is the attitude of our mind that stabilizes us in Christ. So those are the first um, three. The next three affect our relationship. Is patience. The word in, the, in Greek means having a long nose. That's what it means. It actually literally means long of nose. It's like when you take a deep breath, that's what we're talking about. Someone who takes a deep breath to calm down. It, 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 it deals with our sacrifice. And patience is, is not just waiting. It's waiting with peace, right? I can be in the line and like I'm being patient and everything and sitting there complaining, talking about I'm being patient. Patient means this. I got to decide not to complain. I find purpose in the line. You ever wait in the line and you just start praying for the person in front of you? Pray, I'm just praying for the person in front of me, pray for the person behind me. That one look like they need prayer. I say, I guess God wants me praying because he got me around all these folk. I guess I just need to be praying for him. Oh, yeah. Yeah. She coming in like with all the chest meat. She definitely needs prayer. That one needs some prayer. I heard someone say that. She coming in with chest meat. Like, oh, my goodness. So patience affects our relationship because I have to wait with the right type of I, my will. Kindness literally means means to meet needs God's way. I meet someone needs God's way. It means, look, it means that I, in my kindness, I'm giving my heart to meet someone else's needs in God's way. It, it, it's, it's a duty to respond to their distress. It, it, it's a type of kindness, it's a type of benevolence that anticipates your trouble and intervenes in the midst of your troubles. Then you have goodness. What is goodness based on? It, it means what is of spiritual virtue. It, 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 it is based upon your thoughts. So patient is based upon the will. Kindness is based upon your heart. Goodness is based upon your mind. The next three fruits are faithfulness. That's dealing with your service. Faithful service, gentle service, self-control. Faithfulness means this. 
It's a warranty guaranteeing, certifying that God's heart. I'm certified that I'm doing things according to God's heart. My faithfulness, I have the heart to it in God's heart. Gentleness means this. It, it, it's it's kind of similar to self-control and everything, but it is power with reserve. Power with reserve. Now, you guys know self-control is power under control, right? But self-control in, in this thing is the fruit of the spirit. It's not under your control. It's under the spirit's control. So when the Bible talks about the, uh, the fruit of your self-control, it's not you controlling yourself. It's the spirit controlling you. It says self-control in the Greek, but it speaks of the spirit's control. Your self-control is released to the spirit's control and the spirit begins to master you. So you are not self-controlled. You're spirit controlled. Don't pray for self-control. I need the spirit control. Every time I control myself, it's of myself. And guess what? Myself includes my flesh. Now look at this. So we have these nine gifts of the spirit, right? Nine gifts of the spirit. And, but we understand that the word doesn't say nine gifts, fruit. Now you understand in 22, the word doesn't say fruits. It says what? Fruit, singular, right? But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, goodness, faithfulness, um, gentleness, um, um, meekness, and self-control and against there's no law. So some people view as nine fruit of the spirit, nine fruits, but the Bible is singular and there's only one fruit. Now that's kind of backed up in first Corinthians chapter 13. Turn over to first Corinthians chapter 13, which is the love chapter, right? Tells you about love. Now first Corinthians chapter 13 goes on said about if you have all this love but don't have this you're, you're nothing it says this I speak the tongues of angels and men and angels but have not um, love I'm a sound of brass and a clang and simple and though I uh, have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge that I have all faith and can remove mountains but that I have love I am nothing if I bestow all my goods to the poor and though I give my body to be burned and have not love if go prophecy nothing nothing it says love. Now this word love in the text is the word agape. So agape is automatic. A fruit. It says this. Love is patient. Hold on. Patience is a fruit of the spirit. Love is kind. Hold on. Kindness is a fruit of the spirit. Love does not brag and is not arrogant. Hold on. That's self-control. That's the fruit of the spirit. Love does not act unbecomingly. Oh, that's gentleness. That is the fruit of the spirit. It does not seek its own. Oh, that's goodness. That is the fruit of the spirit. It is not provoked. Hold on. That's peace. That is the fruit of the spirit. It does not take into account wrongs done, um, but and, and, and doesn't rejoice in uh, iniquity, but rejoices in truth. Hold on, that's joy. That's a fruit of the spirit. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Hold on, that's faithfulness. That's a fruit of the spirit. Now, the same person who wrote Galatians wrote 1 Corinthians chapter 13. He says, these are the fruit singular of the spirit. But in 1 Corinthians 13, he says, these are the results of love. So he equates the fruit of the spirit being love with the result of love being patience, kindness, gentleness, um, self-control, goodness, peace, joy, faithfulness. And against such things, there is no law. So oftentimes, instead of thinking of of, of the fruit of the spirit as an apple with nine different slices, um, and, or, not, nine, or, or a tree with nine different fruit, we think of the fruit singular as an orange with nine different, eight different slices. When we take a bite of the love, we get joy. 
when we take a bite in the love, we come out with peace. Now, look at this. God breathed into us the spirit, and each of us came out different. He gives, he, he breathed, the spirit gives us love, and it manifests differently in us. It manifests our kindness. It manifests our goodness. It manifests our gentleness. It manifests as our self-control. So all the fruit in Galatians 5 are mentioned in 1 Corinthians 13 as the results of love. So the fruit of the spirit results in what? Love. And it's said in Galatians that all the law is contained in one word. Love thy neighbor as yourself. Love, the first commandment, the greatest command. Love God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, and your strength. And the second is love your neighbor as yourself. So he's making a point that if you're walking in the spirit, it comes out as what? Love. That's your new living way. Your new living way that he took you from the old way and gave you a new living way is to be about love. I love my brother. I love my sister. I love you. Tell someone you love them. Amen. That's the new living way. That's the way God wants us. He wants us to get out of that old way and get into a new living way. Your name is not on accident because your name is describes your character and your name describes your attitude of how you're to live. And some of us, we can, we can stumble. We can stumble. There's been stumbling. I've stumbled before. Amen. Amen. Am I the only one to stumble? Amen. Man, I stumbled like I, I stumbled like I had to, I stumbled so much. I went to, to church one day with two different color shoes on. Two different color shoes on and I'm sitting there and I like, oh man, I'm sitting in the church. I'm trying to put my foot back to hide my shoes, put one shoe behind another to hide because I got dressed and I didn't cut the light on and the shoes kind of looked the same. But one was one color and the other was another color. And I said, how am I going to work this? Because if someone, man, see how easy it is to screw up whenever you walk in the dark. You can screw up because you need to turn the light on. That's the new living way. Cut the light on when you get dressed. I'm still in the old way. Go to wrong looking socks and wrong looking shoes and everything. And I'm sitting there and like, boom. And so you know what I did, right? I just ended up hiding it. And then I just put my, took my shoes off and act like I was walking on holy ground. This is holy ground. Lift up your hands. Just acknowledge the Lord. Just lift up your hands. I needed to show them my socks so they don't see my shoes. It said, Bishop, what was you on? What, we're wearing two different shoes. The church that day. And I said, my wife wasn't on her job. It's her job to check me out to make sure I'm going out okay. That's like if she would have been, if she would have been, you know, I got Adam's spirit. If she had been on her job, I would have been in this situation, Lord. She should have been on her job. And then I wouldn't have had to worry about two different color shoes and hiding my shoes and taking off people, my shoes and, and asking to be holy ground. I don't, have to, I don't have to make up excuses. And some of us were good at making up excuses. I remember um, being in service and God said, I want everyone to lift up their hands and close your eyes and begin to worship the Lord. Everyone close their eyes. And you know, some of us, when they, is some of you guys, do you peek when they say close your eyes and, and make sure everyone's doing it? I peeked and everyone was, had their hands up. And they were just speaking to the Lord with their eyes closed. He walks out the pulpit and walks to the bathroom and <laughs> uses the bathroom <laughs> and comes back. And those with their eyes closed never knew. But me, being the disobedient one, <laughs> I got to peek that out, bro. I said, that was kind of good. I'm a, if I get in a situation, I'm going to use that. I ain't get mad at it. I was like, I'm going to use that. That going to help me out if I'm in a situation with bubble guts. Uh, Lord, help me. 
Help me. What am I to do? I've already had an example that go before me. So I like, mm, yeah, everybody worship. Close their eyes. Praise the Lord. Come on. Begin to pray for the things that you want. Make my way down that aisle. No one's in the bathroom at this time. They all raised their hands. I got a clear shot. Got to hurry up. Get back. Come on, come on. Get back and get up to the pulpit. They eyes said, come on, come on. You keep praying, keep praying, keep praying. Come on, come on. Keep praying. Keep seeking the Lord. Come on, pray for your family. I get up there and start praying. Man, they're like, yeah, we're going in. We, we Y'all went in because I went in. No one said we shouldn't be smart, right? Look at this. It says this. Verse 24 of Galatians chapter 5. And they who are Christ have crucified the flesh with his affections and his desires. If we live in the spirit, which is our new living way, let us also walk in that spirit. Which means that I, can, I live by the spirit, but sometimes I may not walk in that spirit. Sometimes I may mess up. Matter of fact, chapter 6 goes into it. It says this, brethren, if any man is overtaken in a fault... Let ye who are spiritual restore such one with the spirit of meekness, considering thyself lest thou be tempted. When it says the spirit of meekness and meekness or, or, or gentle or kindness, um, that is what? One of the fruits of the spirits that just mentioned. So when you someone's caught in a fault, fault, you meet with them from the results of love, a spirit of meekness, which is the spiritual fruit of, of meekness. I meet them with a spiritual meaning considering myself. Now look at this. The term that in this text that talk about someone caught in a fault. Can I have someone just for example? Just one volunteer. One volunteer. Come on. Come on, volunteer. You're my example. Come on. It 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 it's someone, it's someone, he's leading. It means this. Someone who's caught in a fault, it means he's leading and I'm following. He's going to lead me away, and I'm going to follow. He lead, and I'm following. If someone who's caught, I was walking in the new living way, but then I stumbled and fell away. Had that bad judgment. Sometimes I stayed off a track for a long time. I stumbled and fell away. But he was walking, and the path was always there. And sometimes we fall away. And it says this, you who are spiritual, when someone is caught, in that situation to fall away. The spirit of meekness, which comes from the spirit of God, the love of God, you restore that one. Now, in the text, it actually is talking about someone who falls off and is caught before they get back on the path. They fall off and they get caught before they get back on the path. Amen. Thank you for um, being my example. I have this for you. This is my book. Blessed on purpose. Amen. For being my example. I pray that it blesses your life and everything. So sometimes we get off track. And it says this in verse 2 of chapter 6. Um, it says this. So those who are, are spiritual should restore one with meekness, considering ourselves, lest we be tempted. Bear one another burdens. Now, that word bear is the word baros. It means this, I carry the weight. I carry the weight. It's like this. I think red-haired Wes was here last week, right? Some of y'all got it. Some of you guys don't watch One Piece, right? Those who watch One Piece got my illusion to it, you know, because there's red-haired shanks. You guys never seen One Piece? All right, one. Okay, you know... <laughs> So we got one One Piece fan in it. I, I went to watch One Piece because they said it's really a good m and show. And um, I went to watch it because I like to watch series once they're done. And they had like about seven seasons. And I sit there watching it and everything. I said, man, this is a lot of episodes. I watched like 500 episodes. And, and then my son said, I'm like, hold on. He never found a One Piece. And my son says, oh, because you got to go to Crunchyroll. There were eight more seasons. It's still going on. There, I'm on, see, I'm, I'm still watching episode one come out every week. I'm on episode 1,112 now. 
I'm like, man, this thing is taking, I'll, I'll be dead before this series is over. <laughs> I'm like, man. So, yeah, if, if, you, if you go and watch it, just know it's going to take a whole, because that thing is still going on. This thing is going So, you know, and um, let's talk to you about Moses, right, lifting up the, his hands, right? You guys know when they were fighting Moses, uh, when Moses, they were fighting and Moses, that his hands were empty, right? Moses says the day before, you go tell Josh, you go fight the Amalekites and I will stand on the mountain with the staff of God in my hands. And whenever he, it says, whenever he lifted his hands, they had victory. Whenever he put his hands down, they lost. But it, because he told you something was in his hands, it didn't repeat in the text that whenever he, his hands were down, the staff of God, which was Aaron's rod that budded, the, um, that staff that went to stop rebellion, that staff that caused, you know, the almonds to come out, that staff he used was the authority of God that he was lifting over the hands. So when her and Aaron sit him on a rock and they hold up his hands, they're holding up his hands because he has the staff in his hands. It wasn't his praise and worship that caused the victory. It was the fact that he was lifting up the authority of God. They didn't take the staff out of his hands. They just helped him lift up his hands. They were bearing his weight. I understand that. Bear the weight, the burden of another, and fulfill the law of Christ. So our burden is to help someone lift their weight. We use the gifts of the spirit, the love of God, to lift someone else's weight. Here it goes, verse 3. For if a man thinks himself of something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. Now, we get what makes a man nothing from 1 Corinthians 13. He's linking them together, right? Because it says, if I speak in tongues of amen and angels and everything, but have not love, I'm, I am like banging on the drum and the cymbal, that, which means this. I speak in tongues, but I don't have love. It sounds like a resounding gong and a clanging cymbal. Not to you, but to God. Not to you. Because someone comes speaking in tongues, it sounds like, oh, that's their beautiful heavenly language. But they don't have love in their heart. God says, in his ears, it's like a resounding gong and a clanging cymbal. God doesn't like it. Oh, but I'm speaking in, I have the gift of tongues, I'm speaking in, in tongues. But I have no love in my heart. God's like, ugh. Now, I can sing off tune with love in my heart, with fire for God, and God, man, because guess what? Your love tunes your voice. Your love tunes, you know, I can sing, I can be trying this, I, I cannot sing, but I can sing to my wife, I can write her a poem or something just for her, and I can make a tune. Mm, the fact that my love is in it is going to tune the fact that my voice doesn't sound that good. But someone can sing that don't really have a heart for her and can know all the notes. They can sing like R. Kelly. And she'd be sitting there, this boy want to piss on me. I ain't hear nothing he said. Everything you said was disgusting. He sounded a lot better, but she sees the heart. So, and it says this, if I give my body and all this thing and I don't have love, I am nothing. First Corinthians chapter 13 tells us what makes someone nothing is a lack of love. So he says here in chapter um, six of Galatians, in a mind that these are letters are often interchanged, that this, it says, take add to yourself unless you attempt to bear one of the burdens for a man thinks of him something. But he, when he is nothing, he deceives himself. If you're not acting in love, you're acting nothing. But let every man prove his own work, and then shall we rejoice in him alone, but not another. Which means this, you examine yourself, make sure your motives are right. You can brag to yourself, but you can't brag to no one else. I feel good because I'm really doing this with loving God and everything. But you know what? It ain't about you. It's all about God. The praise and worship ain't about you. You may not like the praise and worship. They need to upbeat. They need to go, yeah, get this, you know, like I do. They ain't worshiping you. They worshiping God. You need to learn how to get with it. It's about him. 
He says, verse, I'm, I'm going to end right here, verse 5. For every man shall bear his own burden. Hold on. Verse 2 said, we shall bear the burden of our brothers. Verse 5 says, we bear our own burdens. Now, when you understand that in verse 2, it uses the word borrows, in verse 5, it uses the word fortune, that is under, it, it is talking about two different things. Fortune is your baggage, your luggage, your freight. So I can bear, bear the weight of somebody, but I can't take their freight. That's why they didn't take the, the rod out of Moses' hands. They didn't have authority to take the rod out from Moses' hands and lift it up. That was the freight that God gave him. And he bears fruit from his own freight. But the weight of his freight, I can assist you in. The freight means this. You got to work it out yourself. I can be there to help you. I can love you. I can work with you. I can lift you up. But you're going to have to put the hard work in. You got to put the hard work in yourself to get back to loving God and living in a new living way. Who are we? All right. All right. You guys got it. You got it. God wants us to live in a new and living way. Love in a new and living way. Treat each other in a new and living way. Not the old way, because guess what? The old way got us all in trouble. Amen. The old way got us all in trouble. But that's why we came to God. Because this new way he had for us, man, it brought peace to our soul. It brought joy. It brought contentment. It brought goodness. It brought kindness. It brought joy. It brought patience. How unpatient some of us used to be. I, I say this. Patient is the virtue of God that we hate the most. When we want something, but love it the most when we messing up. When I'm messing up, I need God's patience. God, just be patient with me. Take your time with me. Be patient with me. But when I want, when I need something, I'm like, God, I need it now. I need it now. We have a love and hate relationship with God's patience. God, I need you to show up now. I need it. God said, He's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. The same patience that that you had, he had with you, now that you're in a situation, you're going to have to be just as patient because he ain't changing based upon your need. He does not change based upon you. He does things in his time. That don't mean I ain't going to like it. The fact that I got to wait. But that just means God is good. God bless you guys. Amen. New living way. I thank you guys for having me um, come today. I'm going to turn this back over to Letty. Amen. Amen. New and Living Way. Did we hear that? In case you didn't know, that's the name of the church that we have for this building. <laughs> New Living Way Church. Amen. So what did we learn today? Wow, that's awesome. I want to keep with that momentum. Like he's just on fire. Like, yeah, New Living Way. <laughs> But it, it's awesome because it, it does speak life and it brings life and it gives life knowing that the point God is making is that he wants us to love him. He wants us to know that his love is good and to show that love because without love, what are we? Who are we without love? And to have the, the fruit of the spirit that comes from God. You can't earn it. You can't. I mean, you, you work for it, but um, it's given by grace. And that's something that we all didn't deserve, but God gives it to us. He gives us grace, grace and mercy. So it wasn't made up. Uh, everything was spoken from the word of, of the Lord, from the Bible. So the way of the spirit brings life. Christ came to show us a new and living way. What did you get out of it today? Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. The old ways, those are gone. Leave those behind. Don't look back. Jesus came to make a new way for us. Or else we couldn't have that boldness to come to his throne, to come to his presence, to run to him, to cry out to him, to seek him, to just get a hold of him. We would be behind that veil, but the Lord tore that veil. And you know what? That sacrifice was done once and for all. 
we offer sacrifices to the Lord and it's honoring and we pray Lord let it be a sweet aroma let it be a pleasing offering to you let it be worthy that we are worthy vessels that when we offer ourselves as a sacrifice that we are living sacrifice a living sacrifice, worthy vessels to be used by our Lord. Amen. Well, thank you so much, um, Bishop Kendall Davis. We appreciate you and thank you for the word of the Lord. And that brought life and so much that I'm not going to share all my notes because it was like a lot of scribble here. But what's more important, it's that it's in my heart and it's in my mind and it's in your heart and your mind and that we don't we don't just like just, you know, get rid of it. Hold on to it, run with it and keep living in faith, our faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So it's good to be in the house of the Lord. It always is. But it's also good to be in Christ because he does not leave us. He does not abandon us. We're not alone. He's with us. His Holy Spirit is in us, with us, walking with us. He prepares a way. He levels the ground and we follow. He is that light that we need. Brother, when you said that, you know, turn on the light to get dressed, I, it's like, oh, man, I exposed, like, it made me laugh because, you know, you're in bed and you get out of bed. You don't have a light switch next to your bed unless you have a lamp and a little table. Uh, it made me laugh because I was thinking about how um, I sleep on the bedside close to the wall. So when I get out of the bed, I fall out of my bed sometimes because I'm trying to reach the end. And it's like, well, how am I going to see? Like, you would think you know where your bed is. But really, if that light is not on or if you don't know where you're at, you are going to fall. So even out of your own bed, we can fall. That that made me laugh, but now knowing that, yeah, Jesus, we need that light at all times. And we need to make ourselves presentable so we know how we're making ourselves presentable to him and to his people. Always, uh, everywhere, because we don't know who we're entertaining. If we're entertaining angels, who needs to just see that smile or to see the presence of God or those acts of benevolence that minister to, we don't we don't know. But that's why we choose to live in the right way and the way of the Lord. New and living way. Amen. We're not in the old way. We're in the new living way. Freshness, newness, forgiveness, grace, mercy, power, authority, the authority of our living God. And we exercise in that new and living way. Amen. Well, amen. Well, it's, I am going to close in prayer. If you need prayer, you, you know, come up here and we will pray for you. But um, I will end the service with prayer and thank the Lord for each and every one of you. Thank him for his word, his holy scriptures, his power and authority for his governing hand over all of us, our hearts, our mind, and our soul, because he is the lover of our soul. He is our creator. He's the one that made us. He is the one that breathed life into us. And I love that, that he gave us something that makes us that he makes you that breath. And the fact that we're all different is like, yeah, because we're different particles, but all in one body, one mind, and one accord for our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.